Hi, everyone. I'm Ellie Diamond, your new host, and this is ThreatWire for November 16th, 2023. This is your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Let's jump right into the news this week. ICBC, one of the largest banks in the world, fell victim to a ransomware attack on Thursday, November 9th, which nearly shut down all operations of ICBC's U.S. unit. The attack was carried out by infamous ransomware group Lockbit, and as of Monday, November 13th, it's reported that ICBC paid off the ransomware. Lockbit, a ransomware group that has been operating since 2019, has been very active recently, striking internationally recognized targets like aviation company Boeing and UK law firm Allen & Overy. The situation left ICBC US temporarily owing $9 billion to BNY Mellon, according to Reuters, but was saved by a last minute capital injection from its parent company. The attack's severity was said to be so bad that even corporate email stopped working. To clear outstanding trades, it's reported that they had to employ messengers with USB drives to get information about the trades to the relevant groups. Throwback to SneakerNet's one of the most reliable data transfer methods. Python obfuscation tools are putting developers at risk for a total system takeover. Getting more into the coding side of things, over the past year, several obfuscation tools containing the Blaze Dealer malware have been introduced to the Python open source ecosystem, putting developers at risk. Python packages containing this malware are all named similarly, according to Checkmarks, who released a new report on this vulnerability on November 8th. The names of these malicious open source packages usually start with PYOBF and was designed to take advantage of the naming schemes used by trusted Python packages PYOBF2 and PyOpfuscator. The Blaze Sailor malware contains a payload which retrieves a script from an external malicious source, then enables a Discord bot which leads to a total takeover of the developer's computer. This is considered to be a supply chain attack where third-party tools are used to introduce vulnerabilities into a target system. Supply chain attacks have been on the rise over the past few years, allegedly tripling over the past year alone. I don't know about you, but as a developer, I have a crippling anxiety of being unsure about new open source packages I'm adding and potentially adding backdoors to my projects. I don't know if you can relate to this, but this may be just a me thing. And with this news, I'd like to remind you that you can support this ad-free show and get some awesome perks over at patreon.com slash threatwire. If you've recently moved for your pledge, this is now the place to be. Thanks so much, and we couldn't do the show without you. Also, thanks so much for watching my first ever ThreatWire. It was so much fun to put this together with everyone live on my Twitch stream. And if you want to get involved, you can join my research and writing session every Monday, linked below. That's also where I'll be hosting a live Q&A as well as over here on the Hack5 channel this November 30th so that you can get to know me better. I'm excited to continue to grow into this role, so I definitely want to hear your feedback. Until next time, I'm Allie Diamond at Ending With Allie everywhere online. Good luck, have fun, and don't get caught. Thank <laughs> you.